My name's Scott, this is Carla. This is our 1998 all-wheel drive Astrovan. Uh, we started building this early pandemic and got her ready to go now. And come on and join me in my house. Uh, on the top, we put on an awning, just a nice covered area for us to relax under the sun, which is the Smitty Built. It's, I think it's eight by six feet. So in the back, we have our Jackery 1000. It's wired into a breaker. And off there, everything is fed through the outlets and powers the outlets for an extension cord, which powers the outlets, the fridge, uh, all of our USB charging. It also, char it also plugs into our projector. The lights are powered off the cigarette lighter, and that goes into the breaker. All of the actual uh, outlets are plugged in through a extension cord, which goes straight into the Jackery. So there's three different plugins on there, so you can have three different outlets for different devices. For this, we're using we just use one 100 watt solar Jackery solar power to power the van. And then on the outside of the van, so we don't have to constantly be running a wire, there's a port here on the side of it, so we can pull out our solar charging cable. So we don't have to open the door or window or anything just to charge it. And if you're at home dock or somewhere where there's power, you can also plug it in. Place the lights, with some LED lights. And then there's a little spice cubby here for when we're using the barbecue in the back. In the back, this pulls out and stores our barbecue and all of our goodies, our pans and pots and propane. So the roof is all insulated and it's got uh, styrofoam insulation in the top. In the doors and uh, walls, there's foam insulation and there's spray foam insulation in any of the holes. Top is a cedar roof, puck lights, cheap and easy, buy them off Amazon. They come in a big pack, so if they wreck, take them out, put a new one in. Um, flooring, this is a, a rubber composite flooring. Great, we have a dog, it doesn't scratch, looks good, easy to clean. Uh, just a little trim piece, just to kind of clean stuff up in here a little bit. Still some work in progress there. And for the dimmer, for the lights, Here's your on and off switch, which if you just hold it down, your lights will dim down. Our sink, this is built out of a salad bowl, just drill the hole into it, put a drain into it. This is meant to be off of a five gallon container. It runs and functions just like you any other tap. USB powered, so no power usage off your battery. Underneath here we have our water supply, our fan, our vacuum for cleaning up. Then we have our paper towels for any kind of cleaning. And here's all of our storage for cups and teas and coffees and whatever else we need on the road. And top is just built off of a cheap piece of material from Home Depot. I think it was like 14 bucks, got it stained. Up in here we have our food storage, which is obviously a mess. We got some Fruit Loops and some other snacks in there right now. This one's our clothes. We have our sleeping bag here on top. Down below is our laundry for any kind of smelly clothes that we may have. And then obviously our bed, which is a pullout and can sleep us comfortably. It's slightly smaller than a double bed. I think it's around 42 inches. Then out back here, we have our projector set up which a screen goes in front of us for rainy days you just tuck your screen up on here yep screen just hangs up from these hangers here then our seat obviously spins around with our fridge in the middle there it's a small fridge but it manages to fit everything we need I think it's empty right now but 
It's, I think, 32 or 34 beers in there, or pops, whatever you prefer. Sodas for Americans. We have our game storage here. Um, obviously for safety. Fire extinguisher. And then we also have our trusty CO2 detector stored up here. Up in the shelf, we also keep all of our toiletries and any other kinds of cleaning supplies that we need up top here. Just to make the wall a little nicer, we decided to do a little wallpapering on it. So it's not so plain, so just having a white wall. For the days where it's a little hot out and you want a nice drink, there's a bottle opener here right on the end. And obviously we have our USB and outlets. Are those wired into your jackery? Those are wired into the jackery, yeah. You guys just have them put on a, on a plug in the front? There's a plug in that runs all the way through. Same with this one here. There's another flip one on the corner there. And all of this is run off of our Jackery 1000. And all of the materials, this is all... Do we realize? It's all out of Mabel and then painted. These are just cheap switches. I would probably recommend buying slightly more expensive ones because they probably work better than the Amazon ones. But they work for now. We installed the charging switch here, so this comes off the battery and then goes straight to the back to charge the Jackery. So while we're driving, this is on charging it. And while we're not driving, we just, or while we're parked, we just shut that off. That comes and it stops charging. From the alternator? Nope, that's straight from the battery. So it's coming off of, it's being charged off of a cigarette lighter that I just wired into the switch so that the power is actually coming off just that cigarette lighter. So here's the bed. The way it works is it's got a safety pin here that pulls out for when you're driving, just so it doesn't slide forward on you. Pull that out. This comes back. And to make it go farther out, we have to put these in. And they just also lock into place. And... And the bed's set up and ready to go. One thing that really helps with putting the bed down is we actually cut a hole in the back here because this folds up and it's really heavy and just having the old seat belt to help lift it up to put it away makes a huge difference. So how long did it take you to build this? Um, actual build time is probably not that much but it probably took us three or four months in total to get everything done. Yeah. But mostly that was just kind of on and off time and doing stuff as stuff came in or as we thought of ideas. And yeah. the bed was the big one. The bed was the trickiest thing to build in here by far because I hadn't seen anyone build one similar to this. So that was kind of the most difficult thing to think about was to be able to get it to go up and fold down and pull out nicely. So that was a little tricky. But other than that, it's building shelves and figuring out the shapes of the van and realizing that it drops down and shrinks in as you build it. So it always makes something like this fun. Try putting square stuff in a, in a, round, in a round container. Yeah, you learn that right away that you can't just build a shelf outside of here and throw it in. So <laughs> yeah. makes it interesting. So you guys have been out in this thing for like weekend camping trips or? Yeah, more, more weekends. Yeah, you guys been out anything longer than just a weekend? No, we've only been out for, I think the most we've gone out is like four or five days in it. Yeah, so. have you guys been doing like campsite camping or actual like in town? We've been doing mostly campsite camping yeah. so far. So yeah. we'll see next year once we get this thing We'd like fully to do more of, of, you know, being out yeah. in more remote areas, but haven't quite figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like it does, it takes, you know, it takes a long time to build up that courage to pull over somewhere mm -hmm. in the middle of a town, like where I slept last night, it's like, okay, you know? Yeah. People are walking by my van and I'm in my bed, <laughs> watching a movie and you can hear people outside chit chat and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, so how could, why'd you guys choose to build a camper van instead of just going camping? We like the convenience of having it set up, ready to go. Everything's in here. We can just hop in it and take off. You don't have to go and pop up a tent. Like the most setup in here is pulling out the awning, which is literally a two minute job now. So it's pretty nice just to pull up and you're ready to go while everyone else is setting up a tent. Yeah. So, and it's nice for like we snowboard. So our plan is to use this in winter time so we can just park at the hill, come down, come in here, make lunch, have a drink, relax, and then head back up on the hill and not have to worry. 
especially with the COVID stuff that was going on and nothing was open on the hills initially. So it's nice just to have this. The hardest part, yes, uh, was trying to figure out what to do with our 80 pound German Shepherd. Um, and right now the bed is basically enough for both of our shoulder lengths and I'm quite short. So it, it's, she'll, she'll sleep kind of at the ed edge of the bed, but it's not quite big enough for her. Uh, all so, three of you guys in here can imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, little, a little tight, but uh, we ended up, Scott ended up building um, a, a, an extra piece that and I built a, a, a pillow to go over top or a little mattress and she basically occupies you know the whole area and, and we'll put something over the fridge so that she'll she has some room to sprawl out and she's not on top of us so. so since you guys have been out on weekend adventures has that planted a big seed for what you guys would love to just like unplug and run off to i think so i think it may not it may be a short-term van thing but i think the off-grid lifestyle really appeals to us so it may not be necessarily a van, but it may be something like a container house or a tiny house or something like that. Because some, being in this space really teaches you what you actually need mm -hmm. in your life. And you may not need everything that's in your house. You may just need what's in this tiny little van. And that's yeah. about it. Yeah, we've talked about, you know, starting like buying a piece of land and then being able to use this as a home base while, while we maybe build yeah. our own place. Yeah, a few years down the line. Yeah, and that's pretty cool though. Like a small space, it's a, you learn a lot about you, learn a lot about what you need when you're out on the road and something like this. Yeah. You guys don't have a big road trip on the plan? Oh, I'd love to do across Canada. See, see, but, it, see, I knew it was in there but... somewhere. You, come on, you can't spend more than one night in a van without it going, hmm. Once we get this thing running, everything's perfectly running on it, then I think that would happen. We'll probably end up going cross country on it, so. It's a good road trip. I doubt that. It's a good trip. Yeah, no, it'd be nice. There's some issues that we have to fix, and once we do, then we'll probably take off and try it out. So, it'd be nice. Check yeah. it out. That's wicked. Do you want to talk about not having the sink in there? Yeah, if we're going to talk about things that we don't, we wouldn't do again. So, the van is real, or the tap and sink is really cool in the van. But at the same time, like we use it to brush our teeth, and that's really about it. It would make more sense to have extra storage underneath that, uh, underneath the sink. And then just using our bottles outside just makes more sense to me. So that's one thing to think about. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's great in winter if you're going to use it, um, you know, in between, in, in, in the, like, for us going snowboarding, that would be really useful to have. But the payoff, it's, it might not be there if you're not living in a van. I've time. said that many, many times. I don't have a sink in my van either. Oh, yeah? I have no need for it. Yeah, it's just, as soon as you put it in, it's like, oh, that looks so cool. And mm. then you use it, and you're like, well, this is not, I have to crawl in here to use it. And it's just easier if it was sitting out somewhere yeah. with the same bottles, which can easily fit in the back. Yeah. So It's one of those things, I think it just is a standard thing. When you build a van, you put the same home luxuries. Like, you need a sink, I need this, you need that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, like someone said, someone told me today, um, like, why would you put a cup in your van just to wash a cup in it <laughs> yeah because you see the explain it he goes that's like the size of a cup yeah why would yeah. you put a cup sink in there to wash a cup yeah <laughs> you, really so. you just use your cup you just wash your cup yeah yeah um one thing that might be useful to people that are starting from scratch is trying to figure out how to get it tight a nice fit here was was a bit tricky to try to because it's an odd shape um so what we did is actually you could probably describe it better we built a template out of cardboard pieces and just kind of cut them like fingers so they step down and match the edge of it so that everything can match up tight it actually matches up super tight up top but you can't see it because it's covered up now but we were super anal about that so it all went that smoothly it went really smooth it oh, there you go, go. <laughs> it did go really smoothly the van like if you're going to build it if you're thinking about building a van build it just do it like my only suggestion would be is for us there's things that we would change if i was going to do it again i would probably take this van out and throw a cushion in the back and just see how much space i actually needed before i built it and then build from there and decide what i need to use like what do you actually need to take with you so as you're out somewhere be like oh i need i need a water bottle i should put a water bottle bottle in here or i need more storage build more storage and just build it as you go 
would be my biggest suggestion. Ours, we kind of like looked at everything and then built something that's kind of pretty, but instead of having it pretty, I'd probably make it more functional next time for Van Vincent Van Slow 2.0. <laughs> so one of my favorite things in here that Scott built was. Uh, we have a little laundry chute. Yep, a that tight. was my. As soon as he opened it earlier, that was my favorite part. It's I a was like, tight, "That's genius." Yeah, it's the. Out of sight, out of mind. Just keeps. So my question tidy. is, who sleeps on the smelly laundry side? <laughs> we kind of mix it up. Well, I usually sleep on this side, and the only reason that I sleep on that side is that she's a little bit shorter, and our dog sleeps on the edge of the bed. And with the chair spun around, our dog has the space on the chair and the edge of the bed and where her feet are. So it gives her a little more room back here. All right, do you guys have any social media or anything they can follow? Yeah, feel free to check out the van at Vincent Van Slow on Instagram. <laughs> That's a good name. What was it? Vincent Van Slow? Yeah, it's Vincent Van Slow. <laughs> such a good name. I love it. Thanks for showing us your, uh, your weekend home, you guys. Awesome, thanks so much. Thank